Hello students, welcome to the academia. So today our topic is immunoglobulin. Uh, in our previous video, the immunoglobulin, the structure of immunoglobulin was uh, shown. Now, in our uh, today's video, the types of immunoglobulin will be discussed. So, immunoglobulins are what? We know that it is uh, the specialized group of proteins mostly associated with Y-globulin fraction. Immunoglobulin, the abbreviation is Ig and they are the specialized group of proteins. Produced by plasma cells. So, immunoglobulins are produced by as we have already shown you in our last video plasma cells in response to an antigen and which function as antibodies so in the structure of immunoglobulins uh, we have seen two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains so i will remind you uh, again the structure in the diagram we can see that uh, again the structural representation uh, two Heavy chains are there and two uh, light chains which are held together by disulfide linkages. Interchain and intrachain both. Each heavy chain contains 450 amino acids. So in case of the heavy chains, they have 450 amino acids. Whereas the light chain contains... 12 amino acids. Each chain of immunoglobulin has two regions constant and variable. The amino acid sequence of the variable region of light and heavy chain is responsible for the specific binding of immunoglobulin. So we can see in the diagram uh, this. There are certain hypervariable regions also interspersed between the relatively invariable regions. So light chain having three hypervariable regions. In the light chain there are three hyper variable regions and in the heavy chains there are four hyper variable regions So already the structures are discussed in our last video. Now about the uh, types, the different types or classes of immunoglobulin. So the divisions are already uh, written. So IgG which is a gamma heavy chain having, IgM have mu heavy chains, IgA alpha heavy chains, IgD delta heavy chains and IgE means epsilon heavy chains are present. So there are uh, these are the different types of heavy chains. So what are the heavy chains we found? So here that is the gamma heavy chain then mu epsilon heavy chains so and in case of light chains two light chains we found two types of so these are the heavy chains and two light chains 
one is kappa and lambda So N immunoglobulin contains say, two kappa or two lambda light chain and never a mixture of kappa and lambda. So kappa chain is 60% and is more common in human bodies. Now we move to the types. First of all, IgG. So it is the major serum immunoglobulin having 75 to 80 percent the amount is and a single y-shaped structure found in secondary immune response not in primary and they transverse the blood vessels readily and this immunoglobulin can cross the placenta and transfer the mother's immunity to the fetus so most important immunoglobulin is immunoglobulin G. So uh, can see the structure of immunoglobulin G and uh, the immunoglobulin G opsonizes bacteria making them easier to phagocytose. Uh, they also fix as complement when you uh, we discuss the complement system then you can understand it enhances the bacterial killing and neutralizes the bacterial toxins and viruses. They crosses the placenta, which I have told earlier also. So these basic uh, uh, characteristics one immunoglobulin G have, making it the main antibody in the secondary immune response. Moving to the another antibodies. IgM next is the largest antibody which are composed of five Y-shaped unit held together by the J polypeptide chain. They are pentamer. That is bind with five antigenic site. Due to the large size, the IgM cannot transverse the blood vessels which IgG can do. Hence, it is restricted to the blood stream only. IgM is the first antibody to be produced in response to an antigen and is most effective against invading microorganism. So, uh, when you see uh, the, in the diagram uh, below, you can see the structure of uh, IgG and also the J chain. So it is uh, uh, very uh, large in size but a predominant class of antibody and uh, the IgM uh, produced in primary response to an antigen uh, which is opposite to IgG because IgG formed from the secondary response to the antigen. So uh, they produce in primary response and uh, natural antibodies are IgM in nature. IgM cannot cross the placenta as the IgG can do. So if the fetus even uh, though it carries an incompatible antigen is protected from natural antibody of the mother. Next moving to IgA. So in IgA, the single or double unit and they are joined together by again J chain. And these antibodies are mostly found in body secretions like saliva, tears, sweat, milk and walls of intestine. So their prevalence is 
mostly So it is uh, uh, the antibody which is uh, predominant in colostrum. What is colostrum? So colostrum is the first uh, yellowish uh, secretion after the childbirth from the mother's mammary glands. So these colostrums are rich in antibody IgA and that's why it is very uh, helpful for the or very important for the newborn baby. IgA molecules bind with bacterial antigen present on the body surface and remove them. So IgA prevents the foreign substances from entering the body cells. So the IgA dimer uh, below the diagram uh, can easily see the structure of IgA and uh, the dimer is stabilized against proteolytic enzymes by secretory piece uh, can see in the diagram the secretory piece is produced in liver reaches to the intestinal mucosal cell where it combines with IgA dimer to form the secretory immunoglobulin A which then released. So how the formation of immunoglobulin occur uh, we will see in the next diagram. So, uh, in the diagram below, you can see the formation of IgA. How it is synthesized and released from the intestinal mucosal cells. So, basically um, the dimer is stabilized against the proteolytic enzyme by the secretory piece because we know that all the immunoglobulins are protein in nature uh, and they are easily digested by the proteolytic enzymes of our intestine but due to the presence of the secretory piece uh, they are really protected. So, this is how they formed. Moving to the next immunoglobulin. So the Ig is single Y shaped monomer. Normally present in minute concentration in blood very less. There is 0 0.3 gram per ml. And Ig levels elevated in allergies. If uh, we have any kind of allergic reaction. Uh, the immunoglobulin level in blood increases. And uh, as it is associated with the body's allergic response uh, like hay fever, asthma, anaphylactic shocks due to this. Now Ig uh, tightly binds with the FC receptors on basophil and mast cells which release histamine and cause the allergy. Basically uh, the basophil cells and uh, mast cells these are the phagocytic cells uh, and uh, the immunoglobulin tightly bind with the FC receptors on the basophil cells. So when these immunoglobulins or antibodies bind with them so they stimulate them for releasing histamine and uh, this is the actual cause of the allergy or allergic reactions. So immediate type of hypersensitivity reaction occur due to the immunoglobulin E. So in the next diagram we can see that how the allergen bound immunoglobulin E on mast cells induce the 
degranulation and release of the uh, histamine to cause allergy. So, can see in the diagram that when the allergen they are attached with the variable region of immunoglobulin E, these immunoglobulin E bound with the allergen can bind to the FC receptor on the uh, mast cell and then there is degranulation and release of granules and these granules contain the histamine and other substances and they actually mediate the allergic reactions. Now the proteolytic cleavage of immunoglobulin. So pepin is an enzyme which split the immunoglobulin at the site between CH1 and CH2. So in uh, the diagram of the immunoglobulin structure uh, I have already seen uh, now also I am showing the diagram uh, that uh, uh, which one is CH1 and which one is CH2. So the um, between the CH1 and the CH2 uh, the pepin enzyme uh, split into the fragments. So in the hinge region the FAB that is fraction antibody antigen binding and specificity determined by the VH and VL and FC is the fraction crystallizable uh, that is in the complement binding. So in uh, the next diagram you can see uh, how the enzyme works and uh, the uh, formation of the FAB region and FC region. So you can see in the diagram. Another proteolytic enzyme that is pepsin. So how the pepsin cleave? So pepsin cleaves immunoglobulin at another site to yield FAB2. So uh, next diagram shows the cleavage by the pepsin enzyme and we found the two regions FAB2 and FC. So these are the proteolytic cleavage of immunoglobulin by the two enzyme pepine and pepsin. Now the production of immunoglobulins by the multiple genes. So IgG uh, are composed of light and heavy chain we have seen and each light chain is produced by three separate genes namely variable region gene, constant region gene and joining region gene. For the heavy chain there are four separate genes uh, variable region gene, constant region gene and joining region gene and diversity region gene. Thus multiple genes are responsible for the synthesis of any one of the immunoglobulin. So uh, generally immunoglobulins uh, having composed of light and heavy chains we know this. And the genes are basically uh, as immunoglobulins are proteins so they are of course synthesized from particular uh, gene because gene from the gene there is production of mRNA and from the mRNA there is production of particular um, protein. So uh, what are the uh, three separate genes for the light chain? So three separate genes for light chains namely
and for heavy chain four separate genes and diversity region gene okay so uh, what is the diversity uh, region gene a person is capable of generating antibodies to almost an unlimited range of antigen right because antigens are numerous and accordingly the antibodies are produced so humans do not contain millions of genes to separately code for individual uh, immunoglobulin so before knowing this you should know about how the proteins are produced because all the um, parts of the immunoglobulin they are actually made up of proteins and heavy chains light chains all are made up of the genes so we don't have millions of genes which only responsible for the immunoglobulin different type of immunoglobulins right the antibody diversity is achieved by the two special process namely combination of various structural gene and somatic mutations so in this way there is uh, uh, by the diverse amount of antigens are recognized by the antibodies and uh, how uh, in this way how our immune system actually works okay so this is all about the various types of immunoglobulin uh, produced in our body uh, the features of them their functions and uh, how they work so uh, hope you people can understand in our next um, video we'll discuss uh, again a detailed view about different anti bodies and uh, the other aspects of immunology so if you have any query or question you can ask or can comment in the comment box thank you